Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, January 19th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I've got an interesting phishing email today that Jan ran into. Now, uh, first, it's fairly standard. It claims to be a fax received via a Xerox scanner. So often we have also seen this kind of uh, lure being used for malware. In this case, however, if you click on it, uh, well, it redirects you to an Office 365 phishing page. But what sort of made this email stand out more than the fact that it was sort of impersonating that uh, Xerox scanner was that it actually also included an ad for Xerox. A couple of reasons for this. Uh, first of all, and I'm not familiar with this particular Xerox product they're impersonating here, but it's very possible that they do include ads like this. So uh, they're now just impersonating the complete email as it would show up from a legitimate uh, source. Uh, but it could also be a second way to essentially uh, try to monetize these phishing emails by adding some ads. And well, maybe based on keywords in the email, this was the ad the ad network delivered for this particular email. In general, this looks sort of like a fairly uh, unsophisticated copy-paste job when it comes to the phishing page. They actually didn't get some of the JavaScript right and such uh, to actually make it work properly. Second story comes from SafeBreach and uh, Tomar Barr from SafeBreach uh, did look into credentials being leaked via VirusTotal. This is a problem that I have uh, been pointing out a few times in the past. Uh, whatever you upload to VirusTotal can be searched by people with an actual license for VirusTotal. So you have to pay for it or get one of their researcher uh, EDU licenses. Well, uh, in addition to a lot of corporate documents that probably shouldn't end up in virus total, you also end up with some credentials that malware actually leaked because, well, as people investigate malware, they may also upload these files with the leaked data to virus total. Just a reminder, if you are dealing with virus total, great service, I love them, but uh, be aware that anything you do upload to virus total should be considered public. An Oracle released its quarterly critical patch update, or as they sometimes say for short, their CPU, and now this is for January, and with that we get a about 500 different vulnerabilities fixed. Now, the one big one here, of course, is Log4j. Now, Oracle has already released some updates for Log4j back in December. I do see Log4j mentioned a total of about 36 times in uh, this Cradle patch update. Now, it's not all the log for shell vulnerabilities. There are also other issues that are being addressed here, but with a lot of uh, these Oracle products, of course, being heavily built around Java, there's quite a bit of log for j here. So make sure that you are applying these updates. And 500 uh, vulnerabilities certainly sounds like a lot, but remember, this is about 40 different products or so, and that's the entire quarter that Oracle is covering with uh, this update. And researchers at uh, Veronis uh, did uh, discover an interesting uh, vulnerability in Box, the file sharing service that allows an attacker to bypass a two-factor authentication. Now, this is particularly important because that's sort of one of the often fished credentials. And interestingly, the vulnerability is actually exactly sort of what we use as an exercise in our Defending Web Applications class. The problem here is that an attacker could essentially just skip the two-factor authentication step. So the attacker is uh, entering their username and password. At this point, they already get a valid session. They are being confronted with the multi-factor authentication form where they're asked to insert a number they received uh, via SMS, but they essentially 
can just skip it and ignore it and they are already logged in. Uh, I see this happen. The reason I sort of added that exercise to the class was also that I see this often happen if a multi-factor authentication is added to an existing application where uh, after you enter username and password, the user is directed then to the now new uh, form for whatever token or such you are requiring, but uh, the developer isn't careful enough uh, to not create a fully valid session before uh, the two-factor authentication step is completed. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.